Universal's flagship coaster wasn't always the apex predator of roller coasters. In fact, the very location of the Velocicoaster was once the home to Roddy Animatronics. But in order to understand this, we need to go all the way back. Universal Studios Florida, the only place on Earth where you can ride the movies. Let's break down the entire history of the plot of land the Velocicoaster currently lies on. Wait, you should totally subscribe. Yes, 99.7% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. 1985, five years before Universal would open. Plans were drafted for a shopping mall called Galleria Orlando over the plot of land which makes up current day islands of adventure. However, once Universal Studios opened in Florida, the plans were canceled. Fast forward 10 years. In 1995, Universal breaks ground on their new expansion which not only includes Islands of Adventure, but City Walk and the three current deluxe hotels on property. Due to delays, however, we wouldn't see Islands of Adventure start construction until 1997. With the start of the new park construction, Universal would then open a preview center at Universal Studios Florida, allowing guests a first glimpse of the area the Velocicoaster would operate 24 years later, Jurassic Park. The room would showcase Jurassic Park Island, including the flagship island attraction River Adventure, along with Terraridon Flyers. Both would make a concept art appearance, as well as small exhibits that we would eventually see in the Discovery Center of Jurassic Park. Personally, I was not old enough to attend this preview center, but from doing research and watching videos, there was one thing that kept popping in my mind. Where is the Triceratop encounter? This makes sense, however, as it seems to have been a complimentary attraction. However, this is our next stop to lead up to the Velocicoaster, so we need to learn more about this attraction. Side note before we move forward, if anyone from Universal is watching this video, please, please do another preview center, but for Epic Universe. I know the idea of a preview center may seem a little outdated with the constant, always connected day and age of our society, but I would love to be able to walk around in person and see concept models and art for Epic Universe. Alright, back to the regularly scheduled contents. Triceratops Encounter, what even was this? The best comparison to this attraction is to modern day Raptor Encounter but on a much larger scale. Guests were allowed to get up close with animatronic Triceratops and meet them in person. The first guest who most likely experienced this was on March 27th, 1999 when Universal first opened Islands of Adventure to limited guests. These tickets were only sold to local companies and the soft opening lasted until May 12th, 1999. Proud to unveil Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. Universal would officially open Islands of Adventure and Triceratop Encounter on May 28th, 1999. Look at the of theme parks, resorts, and nightlife, Universal Studios Escape. Are you ready? You may have noticed at the end of that Islands of Adventure advertisement, the parks were called Universal Escape. During this time, Universal had this interesting marketing campaign where rather than saying, hey guys, we built this shiny new park, they made islands like secretive and called the resort Universal Escape instead. Hopefully this doesn't happen for Epic Universe, however, I doubt this will because the park isn't even on the main property, but we'll see. Triceratops Encounter was open from park opening in May 1999 until somewhere around 2003. The attraction featured three Triceratops named Topper, Sierra, and Chris. These animatronic dinosaurs broke down a lot, which caused a lot of issues with the attraction. I do believe that the attraction ceased operations before Halloween Horror Nights 2003. As this area featured a fully fledged haunted house during HHN 2002 and 2003. If anyone went during this time, I would love to know if this Triceratops encounter was operating throughout the day during HHN, but I'm assuming no, which is why I think the attraction didn't open post Horror Nights 2003 and was just left abandoned. Yes, there was a time where the area the Velocicoaster now lies was once abandoned. It would take almost seven years for the attraction to reopen under a different name. Triceratops Discovery Trail. This would be a test run that would only last for a short while in 2010 and be closed again. The original name and the attraction would then once again reopen the following year in 2011 and shocker alert it would finally close again for good in 2012 and where it would be left abandoned until 2019. Yeah 2019 that's probably a weird year because 
this was when the Velocicoaster was getting started, but you're gonna hate me for one second. It was actually a small time where the Raptor encounter was in the location that Triceratops encounter was, but then it was moved away once the Velocicoaster was picking up speed. Before we get on to the main attraction this plot of land now currently occupies, I do want to mention that during the final runs of the Triceratops encounter, it was really only open during peak operations during the season, or a year I guess because it's annual. I had a pass in 2011 and I don't have a single memory of this attraction, apparently this was open. If you've gotten this far in the video, consider giving it a like as it will support the channel greatly. Thank you. The Jurassic World Franchise And it's where a spectacular new ride has been in development for years, Jurassic World Velocicoaster. Let's go back to 2018. Project 791, the code name for Velocicoaster, was filed and Universal had permits to finally demolish the Triceratops encounter. A year later in 2019, the construction walls were out for the unnamed attraction Velocicoaster, revealing the rumors that something was on its way to the resort. Sometime around spring 2019, the rotting animatronics were finally laid to rest as the entire Triceratops encounter was fully removed and leveled off. During the summer of 2019, two major things would occur, track was delivered and stored off site and Universal filed the trademark for the name Velocicoaster, which many assumed would be the name of the future attraction. Ironically, throughout 2020, Universal would just outright decline to acknowledge the coaster was ever being built. This is even after the iconic Top Hat was built in July. And all I can think about is some weird conversation between Universal and the press going something like this. The press is all just like, hey, what's that coaster track that's currently 155 feet high in the back of the park? And Universal is just like, oh, what do you mean? There's nothing there. And then someone doubles down and goes, well, there's literally a coaster standing there but not operating. And Universal is just like, don't worry about it. Finally, on September 28th, 2020, Universal would officially announce the new coaster as Jurassic World Velocicoaster. This was beyond hyped. 12 airtime moments, 0 to 50 miles per hour in 2 seconds, a second boost from 40 miles to 70 miles per hour, a 100 foot long 0G stall, and a barrel roll over the lagoon to finish off the coaster. We would then see close ups of the train in December 2020 but it would only take a few weeks to see the first riders of the coaster in January 2021. It's actually kind of funny, the construction walls were still up during this time that the first riders were on, but this would all eventually go down a month later in February 2021 where we would finally be able to see the coaster track up close near Discovery Center. The first time I've ever seen the track up close was in March 2021 and I got super lucky and was able to witness a test run with no riders. April 2021 arrives and we would finally see the opening date for the Velocicoaster. June 10th, 2021. Opening day was insane, with the line just to get into Islands Adventure wrapping through City Walk in an over 4 hour wait just to ride the new coaster, Universal had a successful Apex Coaster day 1. Thank you for watching my video of how the Velocicoaster went from animatronics to one of the best coasters in Orlando. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out my last video about Disney's Bizarre Pinkle Milkshake. That's just a genius marketing stunt.